you know, give uh, Cy and, and his team credit. I thought they played well. Um, you know, they were able to, you know, kind of take advantage, similar to what happened on Wednesday night, of, a, you know, a stretch four man that can do a lot of different things. I thought, um, you know, Dobie was a, was a hard matchup for us. I thought we did a much better job in the second half. Um, obviously, you know, with some of the things, a lot of, a lot of free throws, 77 free throws taken uh, in the game. Uh, but the key for us is that the second half, last 10 minutes or so, our defensive intensity and energy was where it needs to be all the time. We were on the ball, guarding the ball. We were off the ball, being active. Um, and that led to some baskets on offense. And it also you know, got us going a little bit on offense. So um, you know, by no stretch, a, you know, a, a game that we played exceptionally well in, but we did some good things. We need to get a lot better, though. And I think our guys understand that. And it's always good to be able to talk about that and work on that after a win. And, um, uh, you know, that's what we'll be able to do now. Yeah, you know what? And, and, and again, I'm not a big stat guy. You know, I use them and look at them. And, you know, stat line was, was good. And at the same time, I, I think he can play a lot better. And we're going to need him to play a lot better. And now, you know, I've coached him for five games now. And he, he can really be a good player for us. And he can really help us. Um, you know, it's hard because he doesn't – it's just not in, inherent. It's not ingrained in him, you know, some different things that we do in different situations. And, and – um, but – I think he wants to learn, and so you know, my my hope is that this next four or five weeks, as we continue to play these games with practice, you see a big jump, not only in his play, but in his kind of grasp of everything we want to try to get done. You struggled a little at the foul line in the first half, but in, in the long run down the stretch, you were, what you did at the foul line is really one game. Yeah, and forty-four uh, percent would be. He, as the old coach used to say, you have a wonderful sense for the obvious. Yeah, we struggled that first half, you know, and, and we got to the free throw line 18 times, which is good, but we need to convert those. And I think we missed three, maybe four front ends of one and ones. So really, it's 18 or 22 potentially, you know, because you just don't get those points. Um, you know, I think we've put a greater emphasis in getting to the free throw line. We've really worked on our free throw shooting, and I think, we're, you know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I think we were 75, 76% heading into the game. Um, and, you know, we need to do a better job. Second half, we went 28 times and hit 75%, and that's what you need to do. Um, uh, and hopefully we're, we're going to continue to do that. But I, I did think that physicalness around the basket, both on drives and on post-ups, was a, was a big key for us. And it was spread out. Robert had six free throws. Daniel had five in limited minutes because of foul trouble. Uh, Trey had 12. Uh, and, and Cam had nine. You know, So we need to do that. But we need to convert those. Those are important points for us. Robert really got after him on the boards in the second half. I thought he was, you know, um, he, he, he's still not in third, fourth, or fifth gear offensively yet. But he's doing a really good job on the glass. And I thought he was – he was he, he gave a Warriors effort on that defensive glass today. Um, you, I mean, you look at it outside of Daniel and Cam, or outside of Marcus and Cam, he was the only guy defensive rebounded for us. And that's a, you know, that's a concern for me where you have, you know, t two of your starters on the perimeter only get one defensive rebound. Um, your your – uh, subs on the perimeter combined for two defensive rebounds, they got to get more. That's just not being active enough. And that's what, you know, we need to, we need to you know, compete and scrap and, and scratch and claw on every play. And we just, that's an area we need to really get better at. You seem like you got some good minutes from, from Stacy this afternoon. What did you see from him? Well, he, you know, um, again, you know, not, not the stats, those, those nine minutes of stats right there doesn't, probably give everything he did. He gave us good energy. He defended well. Um, you know, uh, 
you know, kept a couple balls alive and, and didn't, you know, offensively just kept that ball moving. His pass may have not led to a basket, but his reversal led to the drive, which led to the next pass. So I thought he gave us a big lift. I thought Solomon, you know, in stretches gave us a big lift. You know, the, the biggest thing with, with your guys coming off the bench, they have to make sure they give you, you know, positive minutes and, and try to eliminate some of the negative things. And I think as we progress, it's going to be really important that our guys understand that because they can really help us. Yeah, I, you, you, you know, here's the bottom line in this day, in, in college basketball now, it's whoever plays best during those 40 minutes. You know, there's going to be, you know, some games that are, but hey, you don't think some of those guys are good players that we just played against? They're good. It's different than football in that aspect. I, I really believe that. Um, and they played better than we did in a lot, at, at a lot, in some stretches. And, you know, one of the things that we as a program in this process have to get better at and have to understand is you can't get so discouraged. You need to keep fighting that next possession, compete that next play. Um, and if you put string some of those together, then you can, you know, eliminate 11-point deficit or stretch a lead or whatever needs to be done. So the lesson today was we were down 11 and, and – you know, I got on them pretty good during one of the timeouts, you know, and in, in particular, you know, a couple of our better players. And then those guys responded extremely well. They really did. And, and so for me, it's not necessarily who you did it against. It was did we do it? Because this is a long season, and, and um, how you respond to things usually mark what kind of success you're going to have. Coach, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and again, you know, guys have to make that that decision. And and I always talk about, you know, there's, I think a lot of other coaches say it too. You know, there's five or six plays every game that make the difference in the game. The problem is you don't know when those five or six plays are going to happen, so you have to play every play like it's one of those five or six plays. We're not there yet. We don't we we don't do that on a consistent basis. That's what good teams do. Good teams do that. And we, we've gotten better at it, but you, you we're not quite there. You know, you, a lot of times those things go hand in hand, you know. And I, you know, I, I know what you're getting at because a lot of times I always say that you usually shoot poorly in the free throw line. Either you're a bad free throw shooting team, which we've all seen, and. I've all coached, I've coached, you know, so maybe that doesn't matter. But we should be, we're a good free throw shooting team. You know, we got guys that can make free throws. So when you don't, either your energy level isn't quite there, maybe your focus, or maybe a little combination of the two. And I thought that was probably the, the case in, in, the, in the first half a little bit. And I think our guys tighten it up a lot in the second half. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this next month is going to be important because we, we have to get that. Um, you know, it's, you, you know, it's going to be hard to play Trey 38 minutes, you know, every game the rest of the way. That's hard. Um, you know, Marcus played 35 minutes. Robert played 32, you know, and then, and, you know, Robert's minutes were up there a little bit because of Daniel's foul trouble. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, we got to get, um, in particular, we got to get Corey. Um, you know, comfortable playing the guard spot and getting out there and, and uh, giving us positive and just being solid. That's what we need that. We, we need that. Is Corey at the point now, since he hasn't played that many minutes, of maybe playing not to make mistakes instead of trying to be proactive out there? Mm -hmm. he, you know, he was pretty good in practice the last couple of days. But I, there's a little bit of that, you know. I think there's, there, there's a, you know, um, I think any any player that doesn't play and then you know miss that as, that as much time as he did and then comes back, I think that's just natural. Um, but the only way to, to 
compensate or overcome that is how you practice and then to get out there and play with great confidence. Hey, it, it, that, that's a big blow to us, losing him. You know, he's going to play 15 to 20 minutes a game. And, you know, but – and he was he, he's a, you know, quality point guard. He makes the game easier for other guys. Um, that, the, you know, and he had his deficiencies as a young player. But, you know, coach 23 years, you have to figure out ways because that, that's how it's going to happen. You know, and uh, it's unfortunate. You feel for the kid, you know, uh, feel for the team, feel for me, you know. But that's just the way it goes. And and we're going to give him everything we can, and he's going to give us everything he can in terms of – but, you know, and it's we need good teams, and that's where we want to get to, figure out ways to to overcome those type of situations. First half. Second half. Well, he, he went to, he went baseline. Yeah. Solomon made a three in that second half during that run a little bit, right? Yeah. You know, the, the dunk was a, a really nice offensive play for us, you know, in terms of we got the ball from one side to the other, reversed the ball, got the defense lifted, and then, you know, then he attacked on the baseline. Uh, you know, he missed the dunk. You know, I can't fault him for, you know, in hindsight would have been nice if he just laid it up. Yeah. But, you know, it's an aggressive play. I'm not never going to get on a guy for – now, if he has no chance to make it or he can't make that dunk, then that would be – but he can. So um, – and then I think that, you know, the three, too, came in within the offense in terms of moving the ball, getting the ball reversed, and him knocking that down. So um, – you know, those are the plays. Those are positive plays, and we need to highlight those, and we need to, you know, keep getting those in some of the other plays, and that's just not for him in particular, but that's, you know, we're making some really positive plays. The thing that we have to do collectively is start eliminating some of the negative ones. You put in Daniel with two fouls in the first half. Was that Yeah, I didn't like the way the game was going, and Daniel had really started the game off well. And I thought that was a big key for us, his foul trouble. And he came right in and made a couple good plays. As a senior, sometimes you just go with a gut in terms of feeling it. And then once once he settled down, he settled us down a little bit. You know, I think with 145, I took him back out. And unfortunately, you know, they made, pushed it back. And But then we made a little run there at the end, too. I think two of our last three offensive possessions in the first half was really good. We just, you know, we, we didn't cover the, the, the ball screen and pop from their foreman very well. We did a much better job in the second half in, in terms of our coverage. You know, the one time we screwed up the coverage, the, he, the kid had a wide open shot and he missed it. All good? Yeah, I mean, anytime we can get out and run a transition, um, you know, that helps us out a lot. So I think the biggest thing for us was we got a few stops, and then we were just able to capitalize on that. And I think we're best, you know, when we can get out and transition and run. Yeah, uh, I was one of them that got busted. Uh, and, you know, I deserved it because I wasn't playing so well at, at that point in time, so I had to pick it up. What was his message for you? Uh pick it up, uh I'm slacking, uh, I have to get I have to get stops, I have to uh crash the boards and get off some rebounds, defensive rebounds and play defense, stay solid. Uh, 
Uh, I, he wasn't really upset. He just, you know, energized. You know, he had a lot of energy, and that that energy, right? You know, that that would pick me pick me up, and you know, made me play better towards the end of the game. I didn't really feel any different. I just, you know, made better decisions. Um, uh, you know, to be honest, you know, Coach BG just looked at me in my face after the game uh, Wednesday and told me, you got to do better. You know, we expect better out of you, and I expect you to bounce back. So just came out and played my game, uh, made better decisions, and I think it went well for us. I just say concentration, you know, um, you know, not you know, doing the same routine on each free throw, you know, following through, holding your follow through, just the little things. Uh, being that we have a lot of people that can score, it's gonna you know stretch the defense and make it easier for us to score. Being that we have great bigs, once we get the ball in the inside, it's, it makes it easier on the guards to get the open shots. Uh, being that we were down. It was a test for us to see where we, you know, where we were at. Um, being that it was the fifth game, and see, you know, later on in the season we might have games like that. We might be down, and we might need a couple stops. I mean, you know, um, it just shows where everybody's hard at, and you know, see if everybody leaves it on the line. No, I don't. I mean, no. Nah, I, I think. Um, no, I don't. I, I, you know, I don't think we thought that. I think that I knew that. You know, we had enough time to come back. But I, I, you know, the thought of, you know, we have to pick it up, and you know, you have to get stops. I think when you're down, that's obviously the biggest thing. But it's you know, it's easier said than done. So we just had to buckle down and get stops. And once we got them, I felt. Confident, you know, offensively, we could get the, you know, buckets we needed to get back in the game. When you look at the foul trouble they were in, they had three or four guys with four wanted to foul out. Is that something you guys are aware of and how you play offensively against them? Um, not really. I, I, we just, you know, just run through our stuff. Coach BG, he doesn't really tell us who has four or fouls and stuff like that. He just tells us to run. Our offense and and the baskets will come easy, so that's what we did. Chris, uh, he he provided a lot of energy um, on the huddles before free throws. You know, he he talked to us, got us pumped up. Um, during timeouts, he got us you know pumped up and. He just, you know, makes us play a lot different. He brings a lot to the table. Trey, with the number of fouls that they were calling in the game, did, were you aware of how they were officiating? Did that give you more uh, you know, desire to go to the hoop a little more? Um, yeah, you know, that's my game is to attack. So I just try and always stay in attack mode. Um, but. I mean, definitely when you see that they're calling a lot of fouls for a guy like me, you know, it's good. So I try to just stay aggressive, but do fouls or not fouls, I just try to stay aggressive and get to the goal because that's what I'm best at. So I just try and, you know, continue to do that throughout the night and just, you know, play my game is the biggest thing I just always try to do.